Welcome to Food, Food, Preparation and Nutrition. What you'll be taught in September when you come back is the New Year 7. So we wanted to give you an introduction to what is food and what will you be taught and what is it all about. Plus, uh, I'm going to throw in there a quick little recipe that you can do as well. So key stage three, food. Okay, food with nutrition and preparation. Uh, we want to teach you new skills. Okay, we want to give you new recipes uh, that will foster a love of cooking and you'll love eating them as well. Really enjoy eating them, you and everybody at home. Um, so what is it all about? Well, during your studies with us, um, you will be taught how to cook and apply the principles of nutrition um, in what you do and healthy eating. OK, um, so we want to instill a love of cooking because cooking is one of the greatest expressions of creativity. And learning how to cook is also a life skill. So it's going to be with you for the whole of your life. So very, very important. Now, as part of this healthy eating and healthy living, um, we will be applying the principles of uh, nutrition uh, with our food and we'll be following the guidance of the Eat Well Guide. Okay, uh, these are recommendations uh, about uh, how much of different sorts of foods you should be eating as part of what we call your diet. Now, we'll be cooking predominantly savoury foods as part of that, but there will be um, some uh, treat favourites in there as well. Um, but we want to look at a healthy, varied diet, and that's what uh, Key Stage 3 is going to be all about for you when you start to learn about food. Um, you're going to want to understand lots of other things, um, sources of food, seasonality, um, different characteristics of food, maybe even touch on some food science and some uh, whiz-bang things to do with food. So it's all very, very exciting. All these new skills and recipes, so you say you foster this love for cooking and you enjoy um, healthy eating as part of that. Right. Now, um, before we get any further, I said we're going to throw in a little recipe, so we will, to welcome you to uh, food. Hurrah! Um, so we are going to give you a nice little recipe. Now, the recipe we're going to be doing with you today is a stuffed uh, pizza swirl. So a nice, quick, simple little recipe for you, and I'm going to run you through it first. Now, the first thing we do before we start to cook is we need to think about playing it safe in the kitchen. Um, so when you're in the kitchen, you need to be aware of what's around you. You need to obviously speak to a grown-up to let them know you're in the kitchen and what you're planning to do. Um, uh, and here is what we're going to do. This is the recipe. Have a little slide here. Okay, now um, we need to get ready to start. So if we're going to be starting this one, we need to get ourselves ready and cleaned and ready to cook. Okay, so how are we going to do that one? Well, we need to play it safe. There are a few rules about doing this one, so I'm just going to quickly, from my kitchen here, um, play it safe. Okay, um, so play it safe. You need to tie long hair back. I need to worry I haven't got a lot of hair. Um, wear a hat, yeah, otherwise that's another option. Uh, wash your hands, very, very important, for 20 seconds. And wear an apron or protective clothing on you and roll up your sleeve. So let's do that one together. So uh, you need to wash your hands for 20 seconds. So like that, in between your nails, in between your nails. Okay, back of hands, back of hands. Don't forget those thumbs, both sides. Lots of soap on there, brilliant. And then the wrists as well, don't forget that one. And properly, loads of soap. Now, once you've got your soap, you need to then think of some hot, some water there. So we need to do the same again. We're gonna... Hands, nice, getting ready to go. Wash your hands. Next one I'm gonna do, put an apron on. So you need to get yourself uh, an apron on, very important when you're cooking. I'm gonna wear my chef whites and my apron on this today um, to properly cover myself up. So here we go. Right, okay, now time to get to cooking. So we're gonna go back to um, on my area and we're gonna to start to prepare the food for you. Okay, let's go. Okay, so welcome back. So we're in my area. Now the other thing to think about when you're preparing them to cook is make sure your area is nice and clean as well. I've cleaned my work surface down here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need is 200 grams of flour. So if you've not, if you've got bread flour, ideally a strong bread flour, but if you haven't got strong bread flour, we'll go with whatever you've got on this one. So I'm just gonna be using some um, plain flour on this one. In it goes. Um, 
Okay, so we've got the uh, we've got the flour in there, ready to go. Um, with the 200 grams of flour, we're going to be putting there 40 grams of um, a baking um, baking butter, baking fat there, or a butter in there is going to go into the bowl. So I'm just going to put that into the bowl as well. There's our bowl. There's our butter in it flops. Okay. Um, now they're going to do two different pre uh, skills. Now we're going to do one that's called cutting in and one that's called rubbing in. Okay. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to get a rounded butter knife and we are going to cut the butter into the flour. Can you see that's happening now? I'm just going to cut the butter into the flour. Okay, that is the butter cut into the flour. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to rub it in. So how are we going to do this one? We're going to use our pinchy fingers here, okay? So we're going to use the very ends of our pinchy fingers here. And I want you to get inside the flour. And what we're going to do is we're going to lift and tickle, okay? Um, and each time we're doing that, we're going to rub those little bits of butter, even teeny tiny as small, okay? Um, so we're going to break it down even smaller still. So we're going to lift this up and give it a little tickle. Okay, we've now rubbed the uh, butter into the flour, having cut it in first. If you're not sure if there's any big lumps, give your bowl a little bit of a tap and see the larger bits come up to the top and you can carry on. But at the moment now we've rubbed those in, rubbed those in and cut them in and then rubbed them in together to create ourselves a wonderful base to our uh, scone bread pizzas. The next thing we need to do is we need to add something that's going to help it rise up. Now traditionally in a pizza bread you might be using a natural raising agent like yeast. Um, but today, because we're going to be quick, we're going to be using um, another one, which is a chemical raising agent. Now my chemical raising agent um, I've got here is baking powder. Okay, so I've got some baking powder there. I'm going to be putting in two teaspoons of baking powder. That's the small spoons. I'm going to be just putting in two teaspoons into there. So we've got two teaspoons into that. Now that's a dry um, a chemical raising agent. Um, and it's not going to do anything until we get it wet. So we need to put something wet to make all of that bind together, which is what we call our gluing in food terms. We're going to get all that bite to bind together. So what are we going to be putting in there? We're going to be putting in one egg and we're going to be putting 75 milliliters of milk. Now, um, we can always, if you, if you can't get hold of the eggs, we can always go with extra milk. So here's my chicken. Uh, let's grab the egg. Um, we've got the egg here. We're going to be putting the egg um, the egg into the middle. So what you need to do is we're going to mix, final mix up with our knife. We're just going to uh, mix all of those ingredients together. So you've got the fat, the flour and the baking powder. We'll mix all of those together. Are they all mixing together? Looks like it is to me. Right, now what we're going to do is take a little uh, hole in the middle. There we are, a little hole in the middle. And then in that little hole in the middle, I'm going to be putting an egg. Let's crack that egg in there. In it goes. Flop into the middle there. So we've got our egg in that one. Um, brilliant. And now into that one, I'm going to be putting in 75 milliliters of milk. So I've got my milk here. Um, so how many to 75 milliliters? You'll be looking at about five tablespoons of uh, that, but put it in gradually. Okay, so we're just going to be putting in, we'll put a couple in to start with. One, two, three, four, Okay, um, I'm going to start and I'll probably put one more in after that one. I'm going to start to um, to bring all that together. I'm going to stir with my knife, butter knife. Let's, let's keep, a, keep all things down to a minimum. So I'm going to stir that one up now. And I'm going to bring all of those bits together into one big dough ball for me here. So uh, you just need to keep bringing that, stirring that together until we've got ourselves one big dough ball going on in the middle there. I'm just going to press the sides as I turn that one. Here we Okay, so we've now got ourselves our um, wonderful dough ball there. Let me show you that one on the screen there. There we go. You can see we've got a dough ball there. We're not going to overhandle this one. We're just going to bring it together into a nice ball if you haven't done so already. And um, there we go. Now that nice dough, uh, the dough ball there. What we're going to do is, well, it's just, it's a quick bread, a soda bread dough ball there. What we're going to do is we're going to roll that one flat as a sheet of paper, like a sheet of A4 paper there. So um, you can do that there, so in a rectangle shape onto your board. Now before you do that one, you're going to need to be putting a little bit of flour onto your board. So let's put a sprinkle a little bit of flour onto our board. Now 
If you've got a rolling pin, that's brilliant, but if you haven't, don't worry about it, we can just flatten it out with our hands. Here we go. So I've got mine on the board there, I'm just going to bring that one into a rectangle. Okay, we are done there. So we've done the we've done the rectangle there. If you can have a look on there, I'll show, hold that one up to the camera for you. Um, so we got our rectangular piece of dough right in the middle there. Can you still see, see that one? Brilliant. Now it's time to spread that with our filling. So we're going to be a pizza filling uh, paste here. So what I've got to use to start with, I'm going to be using one of this stuff, and this is called passata, okay? So this is a passata base. It's, um, it's tomato already in there. It's really rich tomato sauce there, and you're going to be using that one on here. Now, if you've not got some of that, you could always use um, some that tomato puree and just do that one. That would work absolutely fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of tomato puree and a little bit of the, the old passata, uh, mix those two together um, into here, into a little bit of mouth. How much you need? About 100 grams of both of those together, mixed together. Okay, so um, I'm just going to mix that one together. So I've got um, my passata and my puree. There it is. And that's going to spread all over that one. Um, so let's do that one together. So let's grab um, a butter knife and we're going to spread that one all over. Around a butter knife again and we'll do that one together. Okay, fabulous. So we're back to me. We've got the tomato on there. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting some herbs. Now you can go with some uh, dried mixed herbs. So I've got some dried mixed herbs there and we can sprinkle some of that all over the top. And maybe you've got some fresh herbs. We can try putting some fresh herbs on there. I've got some uh, basil there, and I've got some, and some lots of different types of herbs here. I love basil. Now I've done this. What we're going to put some cheese on the top of this. It's already starting to look a little bit like a pizza, but we need to get the cheese on top. You could use a mild cheddar or a mozzarella, whatever you fancy on this one. I'm going to go with a mild cheddar. Uh, be careful with the uh, cheese grater's. Like little mini tiny little knives and you've got to be careful not to cut yourself on these ones okay so with a bit of mild cheddar here I'm going to grate the mild cheddar on top of um, the pizza here so let's do that one Okay, so it's really starting to look more like a pizza now. It's got the tomato, and we've got herbs, we've got cheese. You can add some other bits and pieces in there if you want to throw in some olives. Fabulous. A little bit of chorizo, maybe, you want to put on the top there. You have a play with this one. Make it your own. I'd love to see how you, these turn out. Okay, um, final thing we need to do is we're going to roll these ones up. We said these are going to be pizza swirls. So to do a swirl, we're going to need some swirling going on before we go and run these into the oven. Now, so how long do these need to go into the oven? They need to go in for about 20 minutes. You need to be on there for a gas mark uh, 6. Uh, and at 200 degrees Celsius, okay? So 200 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes, uh, depending on whether you've got a fan assisted or not. Back to the pizza. Let's have a look what's going on down here. Swirling it. I'm going to use the long side here and going to roll it up. Good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to chop this up. You're going to need a, a sharp knife for this one. So a small uh, sharp knife, like a paring knife. Um, that you might find that one in the kitchen, but make sure um, that you've got a grown up close to hand to help you with this one. Um, so you can find really big ones, uh, like a, sh a chef's knife or a cook's knife, but we want a smaller one, a uh, paring knife. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to cut through these Swiss rolls into little Swiss roll sections, and then we're going to put them onto a baking tray. So you're going to need to have a hand um, and some greaseproof paper and some scissors to cut yourself uh, a nice rectangle, and you're going to be putting those onto a uh, into an oven tray. Okay, um, here's one I've done one earlier. Um, so we're going to slice up these and place them onto those and place them into the oven.
Now these are uh, nearly done, so the final thing we need to do is we're going to give them a little brush over the top to make them beautiful on the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to use um, a pastry brush or a clean paint brush here, and we're going to give them a little glaze. Um, and now what that is, is going to give a lovely sheen and shine to them um, when they bake. So when you get them out, they've got this lovely golden shine to them. Okay, so we're going to, we can either use um, a little bit of the, um, the milk with that one to do that one, or a, a little egg with that, and we just get the brushes, and we're just going to brush over the top. And that is all there is to it. They're going to go straight into the oven now. But be careful when you're getting them in and out of the oven. When you're getting them in the oven, the oven, you need to think of oven gloves and you need to be careful not to catch yourself on the oven doors. Cautionary note, ovens are hot. Okay, let's go over there and sort this one out. So, cautionary note, caution, hot ovens, okay? Be careful, wear oven gloves. Make sure when you're carrying the tray that you're careful when you get it in and out of the oven. There we go, all ready to go, and I will show you the beautiful picture in a few moments when we get this out. Fabulous, these are now ready. I'll get those ones out of the oven. Don't forget, using the oven gloves, because remember, caution, hot ovens. So there we have them. They've just come out of the oven. Aren't they amazing? Let's get back over to the work area. Hey, there we have it. Beautiful pizza swirls there. They look absolutely delicious, and hopefully yours do too. Now, I know that you're really going to enjoy food at Key Stage 3. It's going to be a really fun kitchen, okay? Um, but there are some important reasons why food is so good for you as well. Um, it's going to be the practical application of maths with all that measuring and weighing as you put the ingredients together. It's going to be a practical application of science as you start to combine ingredients and chemicals in a new format to create new foods. Um, you're going to be a great expression of you show, show a great expression of creativity as you look at garnishing and you look at decoration as you present your food in a wonderful way like this. Um, there's going to be developing your literacy as you follow and read recipes and you follow the step by step um, instructions. There's going to be so much going on. We're going to be developing your organisation, your time management, how are you under pressure. All of these aspects come with teaching food and learning about food. Ultimately, what we want to do is foster a really good relationship between you and food so that you can develop not just your food choices, but the food choices of your families and friends out there. And we want you to have a love of cooking. Thank you very much. And I can't wait for you to join in Key Stage 3.